Hey, everybody, what's happening? It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. Whoops. Hello. <laughs> I'm your one host, Jason. How are you? Hi, I'm Debbie. Hi, Debbie. What's going on? Not much. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoying these longer days, that's for sure. Yeah, it, uh, you know, the one good thing, the one good thing about uh, the silver lining for having a pandemic in this day and age, we can at least virtually hang out with each other. Yes. You know, think of the old days. This wasn't happening, but we can hang out. We can do structured shows like this. We can, I think I might just do a cocktail party. Anyone come on in Saturday night. So at least fun. we can still see our friends, have some fun, get some education. So that's, there, yep. there it is. I found the one little silver lining. And the kids can keep going to school. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Did you see the one uh, elementary school where Shaq popped in? No. So he was a friend of one of the kids in the school. So the teacher's teaching and all the students are like, they're listening and Shaq just leans in. Oh my <laughs> and God. And finally someone goes, is that Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get right to our segments, shall we? So we introduce our guest here. Time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum, I have a different mug, and I try and match it up to our guests. And this week's going to be a little bit of a thinker, so put your thinking caps on, everybody. So this week, joining us is our good buddy, Joey. How are you, Joey? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Hey, Joey, you sound so professional. I know. <laughs> it's so, like, well, yeah, hello. Okay, so I took this mug. Oops, I forgot it's green. Let me turn off the green screen. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work with the green screen on. Hold, please. None. There we go. Okay, so I don't have any leprechaun mugs. And since it was probably the most saddest St. Patty's Day we've all ever had in our lives, yeah. I figured I'd go with Yoda. He's close to a leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, right color. There. Now, I said the rum this week is a thinker. This is Quiet Canyon Rum. And it was uh, our, our good buddy Lee Graham picked this up for me in Australia. And so it matches up with our guest. How does it match up with our guest? <sighs> Quiet Rum Australia, down Quiet. under. Quiet Canyon Rum. Quiet Canyon. And then this is for the audience too. How does Australian Rum match up with our guest? Are you Australian, Joey? I am not. No, <laughs> he is not. I am quiet. <laughs> Yeah, Randy, isn't that a cool bottle? I mean, that's one of the things that caught my eye. Now, let me tell you, if you get this rum, it is not for the faint at heart. It is copper uh, pot still, very tight, smoky. So, like, Debbie, you would absolutely hate this. It looks like you haven't drank very much of it either. Uh, well, I've only had two two cocktails out of it so far. Okay, I, don't, I can't. Boom, freight, freight station, got it. Kangaroo, a baby kangaroo, oh, the Joey. Oh I went, I went a little deeper this time than I wow. normally do. So that is perfect. Okay. That and Stacy yeah. said it is not good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it. But it's definitely not an everyday or type rum. All right. So cheers. What do you got, Deb? Oh, I have been craving orange juice. So I have I know this is against the rules. I have orange That's juice. A lot of orange juice in if you if you fill that up. No, it's not cool. But have you seen the red forgotten, whatever it's called? A forgotten float mug yet? I have the red and the green, but yeah, I have very a nice, <laughs> very nice. All right, Joey, hang out. Joey's gonna back talk talk about his story. Uh, if you saw my live earlier, he did not go bankrupt, but it was close. <laughs> I, I was a little off on the fact, so I, I do apologize. But he wants to help all of us to make sure that we don't end up close or in bankruptcy. That's and awesome. what an odd time to have you on. This wasn't the plan. We didn't know. When we, when we reached out that we all be stuck at home, some of us be losing our jobs. So good timing. Weird how it worked out that way. Oh, and I'm drinking water, by the way. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, you have some? You could probably yeah. share that for big money. It's bottled. <laughs> all right, Joey, hang out, and we'll see you in a little bit. Yes. All right, let's get right to it, Debs, because we got a lot of good stuff here. I got lots of fun things to share tonight. So without further ado, without further ado, hey. Hello. There we go. My thing's like, no, I'm not going to work for a second. Mm -hmm. All right. Time for our scores of the week. These are the things that you should be on the lookout for or bolo. Yes. This is a, a Verizon cell phone. We have a, a spot in town here where we go and get things that we're like in offices. And so I think uh -oh. we did a dollar. Uh oh, Debbie froze. I did? Can you hear me now? OK, 
Can you hear me now? Hello? Uh-oh. Huh. Hello? Hello, am I back? Are you back? Am I back? Are you back? We're back. All right. That was so weird. Oh, you know, I've been trying to send text out to people and it can't be delivered. And I phone call somebody and you get that weird voice. Sorry, this call can't go through. Well, and, I, and I'm hardwired to my modem. So oh, my. It, wasn't like, it wasn't like the Wi-Fi went. <laughs> I All right. Hard too. That's why I was kind of surprised. All right, back to your back to your flip phone. <laughs> yeah, we have a place where we can go and get things. And so for the heck of it, I we picked these up. We paid a dollar, and I finally sold one for twenty two ninety nine. Has all you know all the parts and everything. So hey, it worked. Uh, I saw that come through your score. I'm like, where did you get that? I have more of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and talk about stitchery kits. Everybody knows, get your stitch kits up. Any kind of craft things because people are buying. This has been listed since 20, July 2017, and we took a best offer of $35. I think I paid $6.99 for this way back. So I sold. And it got really fast from California to Virginia. Like in Well, yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. And I don't know. There's can you? There's another picture. That's that. And then there's a picture. This is a- Oh, yeah. I'm going to get to the other picture in a second, but go ahead and talk okay. about it first. This is fiber optic, Buddy Rabbit. Uh, sold for $29, my full asking price. He was in the box and everything. And this looks like a, a nice, normal rabbit. But then you look at this and you're like, ah, what is this? <laughs> yes. He looks cooler that way. Yeah, but I saw that. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, if you don't look, you're just like, what is this demon light? <laughs> yes. Uh, I picked this up at a garage sale a couple of years ago when I thought I was going to be crafty. I think I paid like five bucks for it. And I thought, no, I'm not crafty. So I sold it for, I think it says $20, $26. I can't see that small print there. Yeah, the little carousel had all the, and it was really cute. Bill bubble wrapped everything together so it didn't move. And off it went. Yay. It looks so pretty too. I know. Lots of colors. Did, now, did that actually carousel around? Yeah, I think it did. I think did so. Did you make a video? No. No. I can't remember if it carouseled around or not. Okay. That's not, you know. Did I miss one of your scores? Or was that four? Uh, I, geez, I did Benny. I guess that was, I don't know. Can't All right. Cool. I, I felt like there should be one more, but I don't know. All right. So some of you saw this uh, jacket on Pawn Stars. Yay. And they didn't buy it, but I sold it uh, to Australia. And this is not my, uh, not my where in the world mm -hmm. segment this week. Uh, whoops. Oops. Stop it. Uh, but I got $65 for it. This was one of those things where I saw someone holding it in a thrift store he was trying to convince his girlfriend it was a good buy. She was trying to tell him it wasn't. I was using the force. I was using the force to will him to put it down, and he did. And the yes. second I heard metal hit metal, so the hanger metal hit the rack, I grabbed it. It was $5. It was made from a 1989 blackjack felt from Caesar's Palace. It was lined and everything, and uh, it sold for $65 to Australia. Uh, found this now. If you remember, if you've been watching Thrifty Business for a while, you should remember this spittoon because I found it in the shoe section and I shared a picture uh, that day because you always got to keep your eyes open, even in the sections you don't normally source. And someone obviously picked this up and then set it down on the shoes. I paid four dollars, wow. it didn't sell for 211, it sold for 150. But uh, we talked about it in the thrifting board yesterday. You can't get more money. Unless you ask for more money, here are the last four solds of the exact same thing, 99, 105, 50, and my 150. So you cannot get more if you don't ask for more. That's right. You know what I think? I thought this was? The Monopoly hat. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's a spittoon. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need demos. <laughs> All right, and then this was, you know, sourcing everywhere to keep your eyes open for things everywhere. This was at a record store in Atlanta, and we were already ringing out. I'm like, what the hell? I love the thing. Thought it was a box set for the movie starring Kurt Russell, one of the greatest movies of all time. It is based on that movie, 
but it was a board game that was done on Kickstarter. So Kickstarter was the only place you could find it. And they sold it for $20 wow. and someone bought it last week. So obviously people are starting to buy more games, more puzzles and more music. Wow. Don't you wish you could have bought about 10 of those back on the Kickstarter? Yep. Uh, and then this, uh, you know, you know, my San Marcos blankets, I sold this one this week for $91. I've had this one for a while because I don't take pictures in this bedroom anymore. So this one I've had for a little while, but uh, I think I paid 10 or 11 for it and sold it for $91. Nice. All right. Now it's time for CD and cassette scores of the week. If you're not flipping media yet, you should be. And you should be for sure right now because every, like I shipped nine items today only one wasn't a cd everyone's buying music because they're like well we're stuck at home i might as well buy the music i always wanted to buy and i got time to listen to it all right first off flipping cassettes and oh hey deb's in here look at that hey there's my other score <laughs> um the napa valley cassette box i live about a half hour from napa valley so i've probably sold five or six between the cassette and the cd holders for these um sold it for 39 dollars. took a little while but it's really sad when I, I've been at the thrift store before and they're using it to store all their cassette tapes that are for sale. And I'm like, no, I want to dump it out and buy the cassette. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want your case. Yeah, they are, they're out there. Good job. All right. So uh sold this Iron Maiden virtual 11 cassette uh, this week. I paid a buck for it. However, you will see it in the duds coming up. So stay tuned. But even better, as you can see, I paid $4 for this Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon. And sold it for $29. Nice. That's a used cassette. <laughs> $29. But that's not all. Time for flipping CDs. And man, it was an amazing last seven days. Again, so many. I can't even show them to you all. <clears throat> but I wanna, what I'm going to try and start doing is taking a picture of the original tag and then oh. dropping that on top. So I sold this Mondo Hollywood. Uh, I bought it for $3.95 up in the Bay Area near Debbie. And I sold it for $50. I have no clue what this is, but I scanned it and it looked good. Songsmith, Songs from the Notorious Witch World by Heather Alexander. I did pay a whopping $14, so it wasn't a Peggy quarter find, but I sold it for $100. Nice. That's, uh, those weird ones that are the ones I look for. Yep. Now, if you took flipping CDs last week, last week, uh, these next three are straight out of the, the web class. And so weird, they sold the week after because I just taught this stuff and then they sold. So we talked about three inch mini CDs, sold as ventures one for $10. We talked about autograph CDs. I have not a clue who Gabrielle and the apocalypse is. And I don't think anybody knows, but I did find it for a buck 40 at Savers and sold it for uh, 20 bucks. And no one cares, but the fact that this one is autographed, the one fan did care enough. Yeah. And we talked about box sets. Picked up this box set at the record store. Tom Payne, the Heartbreakers, playback for $14 and sold it for $80. Score. Yeah. So plenty of great scores this week. And I've had so many more today. I've already got next week's all ready to go. But not everything is a winner. Now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. I like this plaid, by the way. Oh, no. That's why Bill picked it up. We're up at uh, Lake Tahoe Goodwill, and he paid $6.99 for it, but he didn't really check the price. And we got home, it was like, oh, $8.99. So what the heck? We put it up for $19.99. We were so excited it sold, and then they didn't pay, and they asked for us Aww. to pay. We canceled the transaction for him. Sure. So we still have it. We might have to lower the price, but yeah, somebody needs that hat. It's perfect colors. Yeah, I uh, I love the plaid on that. I'm like, oh, man, that's cool. And it says Slurpee on it. I mean, I know. this is a Sandra Boynton. That used to be such a bolo. And this has been listed since June of 2017. It's got mother on it. So it's gone through two Mother's Days and still hasn't sold. So last night, I had it priced at $26.99. I lowered the price last night to $19.99. I will see what happens. But I used to grab every Sandra Boynton mug I could find. But... Too bad. You know, funny thing is, if you look at that real quick, I'm like, oh, is this mug supposed to say Mother Effer? <laughs> that's what I that's what I first thought. Okay, remember how I said this is going to be in the dud? Well, here's my dud. I had two versions of the cassette. The one I sold on eBay for 13 was a lesser version of the cassette. Problem was, I misplaced it. 
Luckily, I had a way more expensive version on Amazon. I'd rather lose money than take the hit to my metrics, although eBay's going to be kind of lenient on our metrics right now. I still don't want to ever deliver a bad buyer experience, so I just took the one off of my Amazon inventory and sent them the better one. Don't know if they'll notice, but so the one I had on Amazon was going to be selling for around 40 <gasps> Wow, what's the but, but the bottom line is you always take care of your customer. Always. That's what keeps coming. There's they're not just my customer, they're Debbie's customer, there's exactly. Joey's customer, they're Linda's customer. So you take care of your customers and they'll keep coming back. Yes. Now, this I have no idea why it's a, a, a dud. This uh Anabis made all these books of uh, rock bands in the 80s, kind of like the tour programs. So it's all these pictures of the band and little blurbs about them. <clears throat> and I thought, man. This Van Halen one's cool as hell. I've had two up forever. So if you're a Van Halen nerd, what do I got? Six bucks shipping. If you're a Van Halen nerd, offer me $14. It's yours for 20 bucks shipped. Nice. Uh, I'll happy. I got two of them. Come on over. All right. Now it's time for... Where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not selling internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. I'm like, where's the B? <laughs> where's my B? <laughs> All right, Debbie didn't have any this week and I had a few, but I wanted to share this one for sure because it's not the most amazing shirt. Academics is a uh, just a, a normal brand. I don't usually pick up Academics. However, this was a 5XL. It went to mm -hmm. Lancashire, uh, England, but I shipped it on June, uh, June, where'd that come from? I shipped it on March 13th and it arrived on March 19th First what? class to England. That's crazy. I never got feedback. As described, fast at posting would definitely buy again. So some some big fella, I'm guessing big fella, uh, uh, bought this awesome. I love that. If this was my size, I would have kept it. I love this camo print. So cool. But stuff's moving quick. Uh, and then I got a message from, a, I think, a German buyer today that was just as quick that I'll share next week. And he took time to send me a picture and thank me for shipping so quick. So. Get out there, list yourself internationally. There are people everywhere who want international. I'm trying. Oh, I see I'm I sold one of the Van Halen books. Cool. It's a cool book, Randy. Thank you. Ooh. John says he has the Duran Duran version of the Van Halen book. Yeah, they made a lot of cool books. Awesome. Nice. All right. Now it's time for... There we go. <laughs> you have got to be shipping me. Little tips and tricks. What to do. And what not to do when it comes to shipping. Okay, we were in uh, Costco last night walking around, and they had a pile of cardboard because they were stocking. And I looked at these, and I, I told my husband, we're, we're selling my brother's uh, comic collection for him. And Bill cuts cardboard to fit the books, the little books to keep them sturdy. And this was perfect. And there was a whole stack, and we asked if we could take it, and the guy said yes. So always be looking around for scraps, cardboard, or you know, what kind of shipping supplies? Because we do, we use pool noodles, we use odd things sometimes. Yep. Yeah, I always, uh, and I'll tell you, I think I showed this once before, I was getting scrap boxes from my uh, eye doctor, put them in my closet for like six months, and I went to pull them out one day, and there were some colored contacts in there. <laughs> Oh, and he was no longer my eye doctor. So I'm like, oh, cool. And they were non-prescription. So I'm like, oh, I'll just sell these. They were um, samples they forgot to put out. Or oh. maybe they were throwing them out. I don't know. I got them. Fun. All right. So here's my spittoon. Now, if you notice, okay, the spittoon isn't breakable. It's not a Fabergé egg. So you don't need a lot of packing. You don't need pool noodles. You don't need uh, bubble wrap. But here's the great perfect box for it. As you can see, way too tall. So I scored it because at that moment, being that tall, it was five pounds, three and a half ounces. Now, if I get that three and a half ounces gone, then it's a whole different shipping rate. So, of course, I worked my butt off and I got it a lot shorter and boom, five ounces on the dot. Good so, job. when you can trim a little bit without compromising anything, that ounce, it was like $3 or $3.50. Why pay an extra three fifty if you can do just a little bit of trimming? And save three dollars and fifty cents. Did you use the box sizer from Bubble Fast? I sure did. Good job. I used the corner holders, the box size. I use all my tools. I use all my tools. All right, now it's time for oh, thrifty tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're outsourcing. Um. Okay. If you might have a nextdoor.com in your area, we have the app. It's our whole neighborhood, expanded neighborhood. 
Um, and so I was thinking it would be interesting to put an ad, a want ad. I buy used books. I buy used CDs, used yeah. cigarettes. I buy used denim and see what happens. And, you know, they also post garage sales on here. So it's really nice to have this app to be able to access, you know, from your neighbors. Look at that. Betsy sold some jeans to uh, Moscow, made it in seven days. Now, I think a lot of this has to do with the coronavirus and maybe not as much as moving. But still, it shows you it works. You can get something from your house in Nevada to England in short time. And it was only first class. That is wild. <laughs> okay, if you have not signed up for emails of the thrift stores you normally frequent, do that. Usually it's good stuff. Hey, we're having a sale, this and that. But of course, I just got the Goodwill email saying we're going to be closed down now for you know at least a while until the pandemic gets under control. So, But usually it's good stuff. Hey, we're having a sale this weekend on winter coats because we're going into summer. So if you've not signed up, get signed up. Next time you're at your local Say, hey, do you have an email uh, program or something? I want to get signed up because you get tips and tricks uh, that others who don't would not see. Nice. And now it's time for... Our online selling tips of the week. Doesn't matter if you're selling on ThreadUp, Etsy, Macari, eBay, The Real Real. As long as you're selling, we got tips for you. That's right. Okay, I want to talk about eBay's shield bidding policy. I don't know if people are aware of this. I was reading in a, another Facebook group. Somebody was talking about bidding. You could bid your price up or you know, for that person. And I said, that's illegal. You cannot purposely bid up a friend, a family member, an employee, anybody's um, auction unless you know if you're planning on seriously buying it but if you're trying to inflate the price so there's if you google ebay shill bidding pro policy you'll get this to all come up and you can read um, everything that i put on there can your employees bid on your listings no so your assistant cannot bid on your listings on your auctions jason and you can't bid on hers um, and it's illegal in most of the world so just don't get yourself in trouble by shill bidding on, on your on your friend. I mean, I can't bid on my my brother's comics. It's a different account. Yeah. But it, that's illegal for me to drive his price up. So pay yeah. attention. Yeah, don't don't ever do that because you'll lose your account. And then if you try to make a new account, you won't be able to. And if you had other accounts tied to it, you'll they'll be screwed too. So don't ever do that. Not worth it. Okay, this came from eBay, but this could be from anywhere. This is how not to take care of a customer's request. I like this hat and I've hidden all the pertinent information so you can't go track this person down, but I like this hat and this was the only picture they had. And I got kind of a big melon and I can usually size up a hat if I can see a lot of pictures, if it's going to fit my giant melon. And I said, do you have any other pics back inside tag? And their only response was it's a late nineties tribute hat, not a vintage seventies hat tag is long gone, super clean. Not what I wanted the other pictures and they got 7,000 feedback, but, you're mistaken if you think I'm going to buy when you don't provide a you didn't provide enough pictures to begin with and b I asked for pictures send me the pictures that's not a that's not a uh, an over the top request you have one picture of a hat I don't even get to see the back of it I mean I could buy it and then file a claim there's a tear in the back and they couldn't do anything about it I that's wouldn't right. But I'm surely not going to buy from them. They're not going to take the two seconds. Plus, what the hell are they doing right now? We're all stuck at home. Take the picture. <laughs> oh, gosh. We bend over backwards for our buyers. Oh, no. So this could be for any platform. Don't do this. Go to the go to the edge all the way to help your customer out and, and, and you know, get in that sale. Because you don't know when I come back and buy more. And, and that's just a lesson to remind you it is important to put more than one picture. Yeah. All right. So. Speaking of the coronavirus, we are stuck on coronavirus island. And what we're doing is in the thrifting board, uh, come on over if you've not joined. We're having daily beach activities to uh, kind of, it's twofold. It's to keep you busy because there's going to be a point where we're all stir crazy and bored. Uh, but also this will end. Life will get back to normal. And I'm definitely putting normal in quotes. But Q4 is still coming no matter what. Christmas is still coming no matter what. People are still buying stuff. So let's, while we have the time, while we're all stuck at home, let's work on our store. So here's what we've done so far. 
Uh, I took day one, and I called it Makari Monday. I want everyone to list a Makari. Now, some people do already list a Makari, so I told them to list 16, uh, 16, six new items on Makari, and those that have not listed uh, on Makari to list at least three things. Now, the great thing, that was only four days ago, and people who have not listed on Makari have listed and sold already. So, yay, they're on a new platform. They're selling. It worked. Now, most times when we do activities like this, you know, when the day's over, the activity's over. Keep going. If you're just getting in the 13 board this week, you've been busy all week, start with day one. Get some yeah. stuff listed on Makari. Then go to day two. And day two was Christine. So I'm having all the admins help out. Probably have Debbie do what? Uh, Christine was take a book and read on Tuesday. We all have those books we bought that kind of relate to our business. Like yeah. I have a bunch of Tiki books that I haven't read read yet. I've, I've looked at the pictures. Uh, but that's going to be more knowledge in your brain. And maybe it was a book you bought to flip, but you wanted to read first. Start reading that book or start learning something about the things you like, and that way you have better knowledge. And then we, we asked you to post what book you're reading. Day three, Andrew took it, and that's supposed to be him as a little mermaid on the front of the ship, you know, the little thing. Love it. Um, uh, was to offer multiple options for shipping on your listing. So if you offer first class, go back and add in priority mail. If you've not signed up for pirate ship yet, sign up for it. So we want to get people really paying attention to their shipping. Uh, so we did that. And then uh, Bridget was supposed to be today, but she has been so busy shipping, which is a great thing, and taking care of her family. She's like, oh, my God, it's today, Thursday. So I said, no worries. I got another one ready to go. So since everyone's been learning how to flip music, I did uh, uh, get your music listed Thursday. and I, had, I want everyone to list something new. Don't really list something. CD, record, cassette, A-track, reel to reel, whatever it is. And then I'm going to go in and go through every single one of them tonight. And if I, you know, if I want, if I see anything I think you need to fix in your title, I will fix it. I, I see Joey showing me some Led Zeppelin stuff. <laughs> and, and I bought something on Macari Monday from one of the members of the group and I'm buying something today. So oh. please jump in and participate. Like I said, if you can't get to to the weekend, still go through each day. And we are using hashtag castaways because we're all castaways on coronavirus island. So if you go to the group, search hashtag, hashtag castaways and you will find all our stuff. Any quick sip? <clears throat> all right, a couple commercials. We'll get Joey in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, for those of you in the Secret Beach, Devin Mosley is our Beachcomber store review tomorrow night. So be ready, eight o'clock East Coast, five o'clock on the West Coast. And it's so great, Deb. I saw someone in the Secret Beach say, I watched all the first seven and fixed a lot of stuff already in my store. Perfect. So that's what I was hoping. We do these weekly store reviews in the Secret Beach, and it helps everybody. Good and then we have our guest Typhoon uh, this month. It is uh, our, my buddy Roy, Dr. Jekyll and Typhoon Roy. He's going to teach us the fine art of negotiating. And Secret Beach Combers, I need three people for some play acting. You need to be on the show with us. I will get the post up tonight. Fine. I and want all the are going to have a show on Sunday. Mom was sick last Sunday. Not the coronavirus. Thank God. Uh, but we're going to have a show on Sunday because a, she's had a lot of great scores over the last two weeks and she did some sourcing before we all got saddled to stay home. Uh, and we're going to go over her listings that are 16 months or older and we're going to fix a few, like we're going to freshen them up. So that's what we're going to do. That'll be great. Linda, Linda, are you in for some play acting? We need some volunteers. I think Linda just put her hand up by accident. <laughs> I want to see that. All right, and right before we get Joey in here, right after we're done here tonight, so we get done in a half hour, we're going right over to Two Dogs Digs. Uh, they have another Max Sold auction ending tonight. If you've not watched, they're quite fun because what Max Sold auctions do is as people bid, the auction goes longer and longer. So if you got something hot, it doesn't end until the bidding stops, unlike eBay where there's a set time. So it's a lot of fun. So uh, You'll see what crap, I mean, treasures will sell uh, on other platforms. Max sold the platform. We don't all have it, but some of us do. Uh, but it's fun. So uh, as soon as we're done here, come on over with us. We're going to go watch Craig and Rick and see how well they do. Cool. And boom. Whew. That was a lot of talking today. A lot, a lot of stuff to talk about. Because you know what? I feel, I feel Deb, it's, look, um, Dropkick Murphys, you and I are both watching their free concert on St. Patty's Day. So mm -hmm. some people are doing their part and keeping us entertained. Yes. I want to make sure that we keep doing shows and, and educating, but I think I'm going to do a live uh, cocktail party hangout Saturday night on YouTube. So you know what? 
if you got time and you want to hang out, we're going to, we're going to do our best to entertain and educate you while we're all stuck at home and to entertain and educate us now. It's our buddy, Joey Ruffalo. Hello, or Joey. Hey guys, how's it going? So what's up? What was that Zeppelin thing you were showing me? Oh, it's my record. I have to list. Ooh, Zeppelin. Very nice. The- nice. Nice gatefold, very nice. Yeah. But look it up on the list Cox, to find it. Make sure you list the catalog number, which you'll find on the spine and yep. typically on the cover, because there are yeah, right there. There's so many versions of records. The Beatles White Album, yeah. 543 different vinyl versions. So you can't just say Beatles White Album because the collector's like, okay. Which of the 543 do you have? Yeah, I still got to get that butcher version. I found it once at an estate sale for eight bucks. The 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 the, the pressed over car, the, where they put the sticker on, right. still sealed, sold for uh, thirty seven hundred. And oh this was God. like twenty years ago, probably. I don't man. <laughs> now, <laughs> when you find the butcher, do you want to keep it or do you want to flip it? Oh no, I want to frame it and put it in my house. All right, for sure. Oh, so going back real quick, you talked about that snapback hat, right? Yeah. I had a similar situation. I was writing some notes down. I remember we didn't have a picture of the back in our listing, but I'd mentioned it in the uh, the title in the description, and the buyer tried to return it saying it wasn't a, a snapback. So when I contacted eBay, they were like, well, it's in the title and the description. He didn't really read it. So I'm sorry. We're not going to take the return. So just yeah. because I didn't have the picture, I did explain it in the title and the description as well what the item was. So that kind of covered us a little bit, but then I realized, yeah, I got to take pictures of all, all the sides of everything. Yeah. There, there's a happy medium between too many and not enough. Like uh, our one buddy sells postcards other than front and back. There ain't nothing else to do. The yeah, same thing with sports cards. So I sell those yeah. a lot as front and back. Maybe if there's a descriptive number or a serial number on it, you get a close up of that. But other than that, yeah. Realistic. And then Debbie, uh, you guys had a lot of good pictures of the, of the scary bunny in the dark. Because you had dark and you had light. And so that's important there. But like with a hat, you should definitely have a bag. Like I said, I got a fat melon. I need to see if that's going to fit my head. And I can usually gauge it if I can kind of see all the way around it. But it was just crumpled up in that front photo. And that was it. Yeah. yeah if you can't take the two seconds, I'm not going to give you my money. We did have one return on a hat. It was it was a snapback, but it was it still didn't fit the guy. He put extenders in and it still didn't fit him. And he sent it back to us with the extenders. But I was like, oh, no problem. Take it back. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know I don't got the biggest melon. I sold some sunglasses. I thrifted them with our friend Stephanie once. And they were a smidge big on me, which was like, whoa. And a, and a dude got them. And he goes, oh, they're too small. And I'm like, oh, I feel better about my fat head now. I don't, my, <laughs> mine's a lot smaller. <laughs> All right. So uh, Angela says, Joey looks like Gary Lavox. I don't know who that is. Lead singer of Rascal Flats, I believe. Oh, that's why I don't know who that is because I yeah. I get that a lot actually. I get that from my family too. All right, but that makes sense. I mean, I know what they look like. I just I've never heard his name. So yeah. It, it's, All I've right, so Deb, why don't you introduce Joey? Because you knew. I mean, you, no, no, oh, I yeah. but you spend time with him, like in person time, which is you know. Yeah. Well, can I introduce tell the story of how we met? Actually, sure. Yeah. I don't know if you have the picture, Jason. I donated well, a shirt to our local Savers Vacaville. And a little while later, Joey posts in the thrifty board, hey, I found this shirt, and it's a, you know, it's a very unique shirt, and it was mine. And he asked Jason about it, and I was busted. Jason goes, Debbie, did you donate this shirt? And I said, yes. So Joey lives about oh, 30 minutes from me. He was in my town, and he bought that shirt and posted it. So we're like, boom. Then we kind of started chatting, and then I invited him to come to the uh, Bay Area meetup group in San Jose at eBay headquarters. So we just kind of started getting to know. It was a fun way to meet somebody. And because of that, a few other people I didn't know lived in Vacaville. They were like, there's a Savers in Vacaville? When? <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun. So that that's that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember posting that and thinking I was getting in trouble. <laughs> No, I got in trouble. <laughs> you know, church and with the boys was over. Hey, I just got a message from an eBay uh, buyer, and we all have the same feeling. When we get those messages, we're like, oh no. Yeah. I've gotten two today, two today that reach out to thank me after they got the item. And, you know, that's not common, but man, what a nice thing. So it makes me think I should probably do that too. Because while you were telling the story, I got that warm feeling because the customer just said, hey, man, I got it. It's great. Thanks. 
Yeah, I'm glad to you too. And I always tell them, thank you. I'm so glad it found its new home. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> Joey is here because a couple of reasons. One is we all should have some side hustles. I have a ton. And Joey has a ton too, to the point where I'm like, I feel like I'm uh, not doing my part. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell everybody where you started and then what happened and then how you ended up kind of where you're at today. Sure. So back in 2002, 2003, I was graduating from college or finishing up school and I was applying to law school at the time. And to make ends meet a little bit, we were, uh, we had done some ins and outs stuff like computer programming and just some little things here and there to get us, you know, pay for some bills. And then we started doing some dog walking and pet sitting for a company in the area. College was done and we're like, okay, we're going to go off and do something else. And the clients were like, Hey, who's going to take care of our dogs? Who's going to take care of our cats? And we kind of looked at each other and we're like, you know, maybe we could just do this since they want to work with us. So we decided to just stop what we were doing, stop grad school for a while and start, pet sitting and dog walking. And we built the company. We've been doing it ever since, since 2003. Um, whenever they had it in our area, they don't have it much anymore. This uh, local Bay Area A-list thing where they rate our companies. We'd always be in the top one, two, or three of best pet sitting companies in the Bay Area. We'd won it a few times for customer service. Um, yeah, and we, we were doing great up until about 2007, <laughs> 2008, when everybody got hit hard with the last recession and people started working from home or got laid off. And the first things to go when people do that is service. And it's the kind of like right now, like I, I'm not walking any dogs for the next month because everybody's home. Everybody's yeah. just sitting around. So that's where the side hustles come in. But so that happened. We were still like 2006 was our biggest year ever. We were like six figures. We were up there. We were doing crazy amount of work. We had nine independent contractors working with us at the time. They were doing a bunch of stuff. And 2000, yeah, 2007, 2008, we, our income dropped in half. We still had employees or independent contractors. They went away. We started having to do the work again. But in that in-between time, we still lived like we were making six figures. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was one of those things where we started feeling like, at least me, I, I don't ever throw my wife under the bus because it's always just me on this one. Uh, needed to justify what we were doing to other people. Like, we went to school. You want to be a lawyer. You want to go to grad school. You want to do this. But now you're walking dogs. Are you sure? Well, yeah, look, I got a brand new car. I went on a vacation. I did this and did that. And everything was just swipe on credit, swipe on credit, swipe on credit to keep up the appearances. Yeah, we're doing well. But then, you know, bills come due. <laughs> Money goes away. Right. And we found ourselves about $370,000 in debt. Wow. Yes. Uh, close to bankruptcy. Not there yet, <laughs> but close. Uh, and that feeling of I couldn't sleep at night. Like, I didn't get a good night's sleep because I always thought my car was getting towed. Whenever I hear a truck come through my complex, it would wake me up from a dead sleep. So I health was horrible. Relationships wise were horrible. I borrowed money from my parents. I borrowed money from my, my, not my brother-in-law at the time, but he was dating my sister-in-law, yeah. borrowed money from him and I had to pay him back monthly. It was just demoralizing. Right. So we found, uh, probably some people in the chat may know Dave Ramsey. Um, I was listening to the radio one day on the way home from work and I heard him talk about how to handle creditors and we were getting slammed with creditors. And he said, just hang up on them. And I said, you could do that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't know you could do that. So I came home and I told my wife, I said, look, this is what we're going to do. Um, I think we should kind of listen to the program, maybe get on a budget, see what happens. And she's like, okay, fine. I come home the next day. She literally checked out every single book of his from the library, like five books, an audio book, and signed us up for his class. And I'm like, wait, I thought we were supposed to be saving money. You signed us up for a class. And yeah, that was the, uh, man, two and a half years later, we were debt free. And that's when I decided during that time that I needed to do for other people what should have been done for me on a personal level. So I went back to school. I got a certificate in personal financial planning from UCLA. I went back and got my MBA in financial planning. I'm working towards being a certified financial planner. Right now I'm a financial coach. I am trained by Dave Ramsey's financial coaching people. And I am a certified uh, pro professional financial counselor. And I'm working on some other 
um, things too, certified financial therapy and um, a bunch of other stuff too, just just to kind of help people uh, build a foundation to get towards wealth. No, that's great. So Deb, have you got have you ever been at the edge where you're like, uh, I'm screwed financially? Not really, but there's been times like, you know, I was responsible for my own car payment. So so Bill didn't have to pay it. And yeah, I would wake up in the middle of the night just in panic. And so yeah, I know the feeling. You know, well, yeah. we're kind of in a situation now that we're okay, but still, it is. Yeah. We're yeah, we uh I uh, I got laid off from a job and this was back when we were still newlyweds, a couple of years married. And, and, you know, the, there, there wasn't the opportunity to make money online just yet. And, um, uh, I discovered some CDs in a record store. I'm like, all right, I know this online selling can be a thing. Let me teach myself. But I was like, how are we going to pay the mortgage? You know, at that time we, we were young, we weren't making a lot with brand new house and, uh, you needed both incomes for sure. And there was no side hustles back then really other than a second job. But I was just, you know, I was distraught too. And I can I can imagine you too were Joe. You were like, uh oh, you get to that point. And, and you said you're not sleeping because you hear the truck and like are they taking oh, it away? We had my wife's car parked in the garage um for quite some time. And every time we'd go out, we'd make sure like we had to come straight home. Like we couldn't really stop it because we didn't want it to get taken where we were. But if it's in the garage, they can't open the garage and take it out. It has to be parked outside for them to repo it. Good so we tip. made sure her car was just parked in the garage so they couldn't have access to it. Wow. That, that's the life we were living in. It was just like, oh my God, we can't do this anymore. Now, were you buying your house at that time or renting? We're still renting, actually. You're renting. Okay. It's the Bay Area, Debbie. <laughs> oh, I know. I know, but that's what I was saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you're buying a house, you, know, you can no. lose your house. If you're renting, you can always move. And that's, the, and that's yeah. the crappy point is like, if we weren't in the situation we were in 2007, when we were doing pretty well on the high end, that would have been the perfect time to buy. But we were so leveraged on the other side with everything going on that we just... Yeah, we just couldn't. Home prices never so low. I mean, it's, so, it's so exciting to see all the comments because we, Bill and I, went through Dave Ramsey at our church and we flunked. <laughs> we need to do it again. Yeah. Over. The good thing in the chat is a lot of people have uh, have used him and are out of debt. Uh, and one thing, because because of what you do, walking the dogs and stuff, I want to bring this up. If you have a little extra in the bank right now, you know, a lot of people are asking for help. Like all our favorite tiki bars. They're closed. And so a lot of them are, are selling some extra mugs or doing things to raise money for their staff who are home now, which is great. Right. Now, the one thing that may be forgotten, but hopefully tonight with Joey talking, and what I'm about to say is we were supposed to be going away in two weeks and then like two weeks after that. And so we have the dogs here lined up. Well, like everyone else, we canceled because we're not going anywhere. So I had Stacy Messer the other day and said, hey, we like to prepay for when we do have you if you need some money right now. And she was so very thankful. She goes, I'm good right now. I said, all right, if you get to a point where you're not good, we are happy to pay for our next two aways ahead of time. So, cause I know, I know yeah. look, as soon as we can travel, I'm out of here. <laughs> I got things to do. So I know she's going to dog sit for us and she's a great woman. So if you can, don't forget about those people that are in your life that you might not be thinking about right this moment. Okay. Yeah, we actually had a client prepay, or she said, we're just going to pay you until you come back. And then another client asked if we had gift certificates. She wanted to prepay us. Oh, that's so, so awesome. Yeah, All right, so, so how, how long did it take you to go through all that to get your degrees? Was it like full college, or is that something that's like two-year programs? Kind of so thing? when we started pet sitting, I was two classes short of my bachelor's degree. and I never went back and finished it. In 2015, so 12 years later, when I decided I was going to go through all this, a lot of the specifications or the quality, you know, the designations, certified financial planner designation, all these, they need you to have a bachelor's degree. So that was the, my first step is I had to go back and finish my degree and my degrees in history. <laughs> so I had to go back and finish my degree in history. So I did that. And then right after that, I went into the UCLA program that took about a year. And then a bunch of those classes counted towards my MBA. So that was a cost saver in a sense where I was already half done with that. So I figured, well, let me just finish that up. So that took about a good two years to get all that done. And I was back in 2000 and well, let me check my diploma. Yeah. <laughs> 2018, I finished my MBA. Wait, so let me check mine. Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> yeah. 2015 ish to 2018 is when I did all that. 
Awesome. Now, do you like being in school or was there a point where you're like, okay, I'm done with classes for a while? Oh, I love it, man. Right. A, that's why I'm always looking for new learning opportunities and new designations and new things to do because I just love continually learning. Are a lot of these online for you? They were. Like uh, UCLA was online and, and Cal Lutheran's down in Southern California. So I, I did that online as well. But th that aspect was like we're doing right now. It was a face-to-face -face online learning portal, which is what everybody's doing now with being home, which is weird. Yep. And, and a lot of people are sharing their stories in the chat. Uh, at, Melissa's one of the admins in the thrifting board. And she said there was a point in 2009, she had no money. She was looking around on the ground just to find change. And so we, we've all had those moments, but it's yep. not how you get there. Uh, it's what you do when you're there too, you know, because you can just suck your thumb and let it get worse. Right. Actually, I did that for two weeks. You know, and <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, that's not doing us any good. <laughs> that's not getting anything accomplished. And, uh, I can't even fathom I was that guy now, Joey, because I'll just work all day long. I mean, tonight oh, yeah. when we're done, I'm going to go list for like three or four hours tonight. I'm going to keep on hustling. But back then, man, I just sat on the couch and sucked my thumb. I really did. I don't know what to do. But, you know, we all change as we grow older, hopefully for the better. Yeah. And really what I did was when I went back, part of my, my niche that I do is I work with, obviously, like resellers because I am a reseller as well. And I started reselling again right around that time. Like I've been selling since 2000 on eBay. So I remember all the pre pictures, money orders in the mail kind of thing. And in droves, I'd come on, stay on for a little bit and go off, stay on a little bit and go off. But that's when I really started getting back into it. And then the, the different message boards and different communities, like, like your board and some other ones where people were just messaging or talking about their money issues or like things about like leveraging themselves or, or buying pallets of stuff that, the fad is gone. Now they're stuck with it. What do I do? And I'm out money. How do I pay my PayPal loan? Or how do I do this? Or how do I do that? And then I'm like, there's a need for a like financial planning aspect for that type of small business because people are thinking short term and not long term. There's I, there's a lot of resellers who fall into reselling. They get into it from something else, from a disability or from a, a, a loss of a job. They don't come into it with a business plan. Okay, so they don't think about long-term planning. They don't think about retirement planning in it. They don't think about estate planning, insurance planning, investing in themselves. They think about their next, how do I take my money and buy more and more and more to live for today, you know, the next day and not for tomorrow. And so I saw that as like a need for me. So that's where I sort of focus my, like I work with anybody, but that's where I, that's sort of like my wheelhouse because I am a reseller as well. And I know the, the pain points there. The trials and tribulations, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> what I love about Joey and Dave Ramsey is they've been there. Dave Ramsey teaches because he's been there. He was bankrupt. And so you have that compassion and you have that understanding. And so I will listen to you more than I would listen to someone who's never been there. Like, Thank I, you, Debbie. How do you know what, you're, what I'm going through? But you know what people are going through. Yes, let me give you advice on your children. Ha <laughs> ha, I can't. <laughs> <have any>. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... When you when you got your degrees and you started, mm -hmm. all right, I'm going to go out and help people. Was was it word of mouth? How did you start to build clientele? So I am a Ram, Dave Ramsey preferred coach or Ramsey Master Solutions financial coach, whatever. But I'm a preferred coach, so I have a a lead list that comes from them. So I got a lot of Dave Ramsey leads that come to me. I have a website. Um, I have an Instagram that I should be doing more with, but I don't have a lot of followers. Preach. <laughs> and you know it's it's a lot oh, of word no, of mouth yeah we'll get followers for you yeah there you go. it's a lot of word of mouth right now um i've been on the ebay podcast a few times on um, the last year or so promoting and it's been promoted on there but i think there's still a scare in the reseller world to really look at their numbers long term so i don't really have a lot of people that reach out in that regard right now i i do have a lot of people who are single need accountability partners. Yeah, just hit me up, man. I'll help you out. So can we do this work with you online? Oh, yeah. I do it just like this. Okay. We can, so meet, we can, we can meet in person, but phone or video is how I have, I have clients actually all over the country and I want an international. And that's all we do is just a video chat. Good. I love that. And especially now, it's all we can do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me shake your hand and give you a big hug and I'll lick your cheek. <laughs> Pound right there. Yeah, it's a big pound. Oh, yeah. All right. So, so let, let's talk about a day, a day in the life of Joey. Yes. Okay. So, you probably got some clients you're helping with their finances. You're walking okay. some dogs. You're selling some stuff. How do you make it all fit? 
how do you do all the side hustles and and not get to the end of the day and be like, oh my god? Well, that's how it is at the end of the day, right? But I, I look at each one as uh, full part time jobs. So I don't. I look at them as when I'm doing them, I'm I'm committed to that thing at that moment. But my first job that I do is the pet sitting. So that is number one. Then it's the coaching. And then everything gets scheduled around that stuff. So I take care of my pet sitting responsibilities. I've scaled back on that a lot. My wife does the lion's share of that now because I have more coaching. But I fill in the gaps of my day with the other stuff when I'm nice. when I have no time when I have time. And I have some time, so I fill it in. I'm, I, I like to keep busy. So that's just what I do. So I can get into the stuff if you want. <laughs> Let oh, me tell yeah, you what I, I mean, do. Because look, we all do that, but yeah. you, you definitely have a lot more different things on your yeah. plate. Like my side hustles all kind of relate, but dog walking, financial coach, and online selling, they don't relate right. at all. Really? You know, there's no, also, yeah. there's no mesh there. No, I also do Uber. Uh, Door, <laughs> Uber, DoorDash. So the Uber Eats and DoorDash I'll do. I do Amazon Flex and I do grocery, in-home grocery delivery through Instacart and Shipped. Oh, those that's are, what Melissa, my admin Melissa does that too. Those are the main things I do. Shipped has been crazy in the last three weeks. So that's been my main focus um, when I don't have clients. That's I'm, I'm at the store. Like I'm at the store like 12 times a day. And that's what I've just been doing. But see, Deb, that's a great that's a great combo of side hustles because okay, look, we're in this situation, and now people don't need a dog sitter because we're not going anywhere, but they do need stuff delivered to them. So Joey's got such a variety that when one isn't hopping, the other one can be. And so, and right. then, of course, you kind of you kind of determine uh, how much you're going to work at one of them at any point. You know, there's nothing, there's no person forcing you to do this. No, and what I do is, you know, obviously everybody has one of these in their hand, right? It's a cell phone and everything's on an app and you just go onto the app and you look at and see what's available and you go, oh, look, there's shops available for me to shop right now. So do I want to go here? Do I want to go there? How much I've got to make? Oh, I don't like that. Let me turn this app on. Oh, this is paying this right now. So I, I always, when I, when I use these, let me back up a second. The reason why I still do these things is the money's great. I like it. I like to keep busy. But when I'm coaching a person and I recommend an app for them to, to do to make money, I like to have done it. So oh. if there's questions, I can answer it. I can walk them through it. It can make it real easy for them. I like to kind of walk in their shoes. They know that I've done it. They can ask me questions. It's real simple. So I can kind of show them all the way. So that's why I do all this stuff. It's more for like to be with them as well. And side hustles is great. When we're working together, I call them goal jobs. So you're working this job for a goal, whether it's to pay off a house, pay off a credit card, pay off debt, go on a trip, whatever. And you finish your goal, you just set a new goal. And you work your daily numbers based on when you want to reach that goal and how much you want to make. That's awesome. And you know what I love about what you're doing is you were trained ahead of time. So when this hit all of us really fast, you were already ready, set to go. You knew what to do. I turned one off and turned one on. I just, I've been hitting it all day. Right. And, that, and that's the great thing is that you do do them. So you like, you know, <clears throat> when people give advice about children that have never had any, you kind of turn a deaf ear to them, but you're like, if I'm going to recommend this, I better know the ins and outs. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, when I started uh, having the secret beach and, and go on the road and teaching, <clears throat> my partner's like, maybe you don't, you don't need to sell as much because you're busy. I'm like, but if I'm not selling, I don't have my, my finger on the pulse. I don't know what the hell's going on. And even though my, my helper is doing a lot of the listing, I'm bringing the stuff in. I'm seeing it go out. So I still have the pulse. I got to know what's happening or I can't teach well. I can't teach what's hot if I don't know what's hot. Yeah. So Paul says he's going to need this help. What's your contact information? Okay. So the best way to hit me up is two ways. Um, obviously, Instagram is there, but you can follow there. It's JR Financial Coach on Instagram. But you can hit me at joey at jrfinancialcoaching.com www.jrfinancialcoaching.com. I'll put all the links down in the yeah know, here we'll or in the, into every place of the show page. Up. So that's the best place to reach me. Um, you can always set me up. I'm going to have a link that I'm going to post to. It's going to be for a free 15 minute call with me. If you want to have any questions, um, sort of an intro consultation, you have some specific questions. We can talk further uh, about that in an appointment setting, but if you have some, just some brief questions, you can hit me up on there. And yeah, that's probably, the best way to, to get oh. direct in contact with me right now. 
And and if you can't remember any of that, you can't find it, message me or Debbie. We will get you the information. Yeah. It's super yeah. easy to find us. All right. You want to actually give something away tonight. Yeah. We forgot actually some other side hustles too, man. Oh, yeah. What is, all right, I, wrote hang my, on. I wrote my notes down. I was like, all right, right, yeah, get, get, let's, hear, let's hear those first. So I'm finishing a book. Woo! Oh. And financial planning for is that just the tease because you don't want to show it right now. Oh, I changed the title, so it's oh, real- okay. So you don't you don't want to put it out. I got that. <laughs> or, um, actually, for financial planning for uh, resellers, it's going to be specifically for resellers. Will you come back on the show when it's published, and then we can? Sure, I, it, it's it's in my rewrite for the last um, nine months. I haven't re- still rewriting it. Okay, well, it's done. Come back when you want to see it. Uh, maybe I'll finish it during this time, and then I have a um, a podcast that I'm starting up as well. Um, I had one previously that I was working with somebody on and I'm kind of going off on my own and doing my own thing right now. So that's, yeah. uh, you got uh, a MB- time frame for when you're going to start that. Um, I have a, a interview in the can already that I'm editing. So by the end of the month, it'll be up, ready to go. All right. As soon as it's up, Debbie and I'll get it posted everywhere. Thank you yeah. very much. I appreciate that. And then, um, yeah. Oh, I'm also going to be doing a, a live webinar, probably the next couple of days. I'll put a post up to Jason for you guys to let you know. It's going to be on how to budget during this crisis. It's going to be about a half hour interview, a half hour webinar. It's going to be live on the YouTube channel, and you can guys can um, check it out there and come on and ask some questions there. And then we can kind of get further in depth uh, personally off air on that stuff. Oh hell yeah! I hate the B word. I hate the budget word. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, a lot of people do too. I mean, it's it's sort of like. Uh, but for me, it's the foundation of everything, right? You have to oh, have absolutely. A but your budget's your permission to spend, Debbie. If you remember from Dave Ramsey's class, I know. I it's, know. Not <laughs> it's not restriction. It's not restriction. She didn't do so. She didn't do as well as you. Wow. I got. We still have the materials. Maybe we should. Re- no, yeah. we should time, it again. Time to revisit. Yeah. All right. So you want to give something away tonight? Sure, I do actually. Yes. Um, so speaking of the budgeting. Um, my first course or the first class I do with a, a one-on-one is a comprehensive budget review. We build our foundation before we move on to the next steps of you know wealth building and goal planning and everything else. So I'm going to give away uh, two comprehensive budget review sessions. They're about an hour, hour and a half long. Awesome. Uh, Very so generous of you, sir. There you go. You hit me up. We'll schedule it. I have a, a link. When you find out the winner, we'll send them the link and we will uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we have two questions, questions that no one would know the answer, so it's going to be one of those the closest gets it, okay? And please do us a favor, please, because this happens every time we have a contest. If you don't need this help, don't play. Let the people who need the help play. Joey, I can't tell how many times I had a contest where someone wins and goes, oh, I don't need that. All right. I know people people get excited and they want to answer, but if you're good and you don't need Joey's help, that's great. So don't play. All right. So... The first question. I always ask about how many tiki mugs do I have, but Debbie and Bill have amassed quite a collection on their own. So the question is, how many tiki mugs does Debbie and Bill own? All right. Hmm. Let's see the answer here. Bill, you can't play. Yes, Bill, you can't play. <laughs> Bill went and counted. I don't think that'd be really all that fair. Okay, here come the guesses. If we see one right on in the next, let's say, 15, 20 seconds, they'll be the winner. If not, the closest. And we don't do the bullshit without going over. It's the closest. <clears throat> oh, someone thinks that you're in my you're in my zone. No, no. We, we, that's our plan someday. <laughs> Heck with Dave Ramsey. We're just going to keep buying tiki mugs. <laughs> Was <laughs> a guest one? No, no, no. They got a pretty good little collection going on. All right, so we see some good answers. We see some. I see some close ones. I see some ones that are uh, ridiculously funny, but good. <laughs> I it, see it's some. A goal, I wish. It's a goal to have nine hundred seventy-eight, Deb. Oh, I wish. All right, we'll wait for a couple more. Because I see the closest right now. Good. I'm glad you're paying attention. Yep. I think Stacy is too. Uh, yep. I see the closest. All I right. Love- so we're going to draw the uh, this question to a close by, by sharing a picture. Look at your collection. Woo! Look at your collection. You have grown... I am so proud. 
Yeah. So we're going to end it right here. And the winner being the closest is, let me bring it back up here. If I can find it, they're one of the first guesses. Don't find Marianne. <laughs> Marianne Severson, because the actual answer is. Let me hold one. it up. What a one. What a one. All right, Marianne, message me or Debbie, and we'll get you hooked up. Hey, Kevin Rand, and our friend Sylvia's watching. Hey. <laughs> Randy says one million. Oh, don't I wish. All right. So, uh, Joey walks dogs. What is okay? This is question number two. Question number two. Let me get to my little banner. Congratulations, Marianne. Yes. Yes. Look forward to it. What is the largest weight difference between between two dogs that Joey walked at the same time? So, just to paint the picture, there are two dogs walking. Joey's holding them. One's really small, and one's really big. So, what's the weight difference between the two? That's the question. And again. The closest win. So here we go. And then we're going to show Joey some scores. And then, boom, we're off to go hang out with Craig and Rick. Yeah, they're getting ready over there. Yep. All right. I see some guesses coming in 62, 75, 142, 101. Bill, you can't participate. <laughs> you guys okay. failed. You probably think you need it. <laughs> Wow, uh, where, where's Laura's? My daily size difference for walking is 94. Wow. wow. Nice. All right, we'll wait a couple more seconds. Yo, you've never had any issues with dog attacks or anything, have you, when you're out there? Uh, two times in, in it's 15, 16 years. None of my dogs. It's always with a dog off leash. Yeah. I approached our dogs. Or My wife actually got bit one time at the dog park by another dog. She yeah. got in between a dog, and they, they bit her on the back of the leg. Oh, we've had, I've had two dog attacks. One, I was holding my dog when it got attacked. The other one was in my garage. Needless yeah. to say, my dog does not go to the park anymore. <laughs> All right. So, okay, I got it. So, all right, we're going to close that contest right now. And our closest winner is Swifty the Clown because the answer is one hundred and eighty-eight pounds between the two dogs. Oh my gosh! So what kind of dogs were they, Joe? <laughs> One was a Bernice um, Mastiff mix. Or yeah, Bernice. It was, oh yeah, Bernice. Uh, yeah, Bernice Mastiff mix. I think it was, and the other one was a little, like, I don't know, frou frou mix. <laughs> so two hundred pounds and twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Same owner. Uh, the the. Massive mix was actually staying at the other dog's house for a couple of days. So. Oh, a little buddy, a little sleepover. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's, uh, th and thank you. So, uh, a Swifty the Clown, what was that? Crusty the Clown? Reach yeah. out to me and I'll get you all hooked up. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's look at, uh, Joey scores and then we're out of here. Did you see Marie's comment? That's a horse, not a dog. Yeah. I know. Is this a shirt? It is a shirt. It's the Disney Electric Parade. Oh. Um, yeah, I got this at uh, a local yard sale for I think it was a dollar. Four quarters. For a dollar, sold it for a hundred. It was our first sale on Poshmark. I listed it there. My wife was like, "Well, I don't want to do another platform. We already do eBay." I listed it on there. It finally sold about a month later, and she's like, "Wait, how do we do this Poshmark thing?" <laughs> and now she's she's the she's the, she's the queen of Poshmark, man. She's nice. awesome. So yeah, that was our first Poshmark sale. I kind love of kind of started the platform. Now, to the untrained eye, this looks very plain and boring. What is this? This is a Rob. This is a Pendleton, um, right. like a corduroy wool. It's like Ooh. buttoned up. Uh, I think we paid a two dollars for that. Again, it was on Poshmark. We had it listed high. We always list our stuff a little bit higher on Posh, and we got an offer for it for sixty-eight dollars. And we're like, yeah, we're gonna always pay two dollars for it. We're gonna sell it. Nice ROI. Yeah, that's always what I look for when I list, when I buy things. I don't buy a lot, so when I do, I make sure I get a good return on my money. This was a Disney Fox and the Hound um, collectible, like, statuette. And I got this at a estate sale for $15. And I looked up comps at the estate sale, so I bought the best two that they had. And this one sold for $75, and I had another one for a different movie, uh, Robin Hood, that sold for $55. That doesn't look fun to ship unless it was in its original box. It was in the original styrofoam, which oh, is great. So I was able to take that. It didn't have the outer box or the or the um, certificate with it, but it, 
that's what had the numbering on the bottom of it and stuff. And it was funny because I had one then both listed on eBay and Posh and one sold on eBay and one sold on Posh the very next day, like back to back. Two different oh. people, but back to back. Nice. What the what? I picked this up literally. I picked this up for a dollar at Goodwill. Oh my oh. god! It was sealed um, in and out Monopoly collector's edition. It was only handed out to employees as a Christmas gift back in like two thousand and two, two thousand and three. No, I had it listed for a long time for one hundred and ninety nine dollars, and it wasn't selling. And through the advice of some of the people at Meetup, they said raise it to two hundred ninety nine dollars and give free shipping. And that's what I did. And shipping was only like $10 for the priority in the shoe box, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, game, game board box. Right. Or whatever it was. And yeah, it sold pretty quickly after that. It was, it was sealed, this one. So the, I knew it was good because I hadn't seen any on there. And the pieces themselves, the little Monopoly pieces that came with it, were selling for like 15, 20 bucks a piece. So I was Are like, they French fries and hamburgers? <laughs> they were, yeah. They were like little things like that for the game. It was crazy. So oh, I, I have not seen any since. I keep on the lookout for it. No, no. Normally, I skip all NASCAR stuff, but then you showed this. I'm like, this is a dud. <laughs> oh, it's a dud. That's all, okay. Well, then I'm like, this is a dud. So I bought this actually way in the beginning. Um, it's actually funny because the time we met at the Tiki Bar in Alameda, I you had asked me like, what's your what's your best score? What's the best thing you ever bought? And I said, oh, it's just Dale Earnhardt jacket. <laughs> and that was like four years ago, and I finally just sold it. Um, I spent way too much on it. I think I spent about thirty dollars on it. I got it dry clean for another ten or fifteen dollars, and it just didn't sell. It didn't sell. It's actually sold twice, and nobody paid for it. Oh wow! And it finally sold for seventy, and I'm like, get it out of here. <laughs> Tired of looking at it. Get it out of here. So <laughs> it, yeah, it sold for. We made money on it, but if you think about the time frame it took us to make oh, it yeah. and all that stuff, it was kind of just like a wash at that point. But yeah. So that is right. the same. For a second, I'm like, oh no, should I go back to NASCAR stuff? <laughs> no, it didn't sell after he had his car, his plane crashed and his family almost died. It, it didn't sell then. It didn't sell after other crashes. It, nobody wanted the Stale Hart Jr. jacket. Huh. So I think well, I overpriced it, but I, was, I bought it for high. So I'm like, I'm going to, whatever. I want to thank you for sharing all your side hustles and hopefully maybe uh, some, some of the people watching who maybe are having a little bit of a, a moment right now. Mm -hmm. uh, when one things aren't working like dog walking, other things are like delivering food and picking up grocery. I mean, yeah. you know, Melissa does that. And she says she is just hopping right now. So you've got to have those fallbacks. You can't yeah. list on one platform. You can't do one thing in this day and age. It just doesn't work that way anymore. Diversify. Yeah. If you want to work for yourself, if you want to work for a company and you got a great, uh, you're getting great money and great benefits, that's one thing. But if you want to be us and your own entrepreneur, you're going to work longer, you're going to work harder, and you're going to enjoy every single minute of it. 24 7, we got to work. Yeah, you want those goals to hit, you got to hit those goal jobs, man. That's right. And Joey's going to help put you in place, too, to make sure that you don't end up like me sucking my thumb on the couch or like him, hey, like, I can keep spending. Yeah. <laughs> Easy peasy. Yeah. So All right, uh, we will. That we have our own financial planner in our group. Yeah, you know, this yeah. is like our own personal one. So definitely, yeah, uh, definitely. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for letting me promote a little bit. Um, if you yeah. guys want to hit me up, uh, I'll put the links in for my email and the Instagram. Uh, there's also a. It's weird time you had me on because I just am starting everything. So I have a I have a debt free reseller community Facebook group for people who want to use reselling to become debt free or run their business debt free. Talk money in there all the time. Just hit head on over there. I know thrifting board is sort of like don't talk money too much. Don't talk taxes too much. No, not, not hit me up over there if you want money, to. You can talk money. It's the taxes because the yeah. people go well. Jason yeah. said oh, totally. this is how I pay my taxes. I never want that to be a I reason. Know. Someone goes to jail. Exactly. Yeah. So if you have questions, <laughs> feel free to you know post them over there as well or tag me in some stuff. And I'll have my podcast up. It's MBR Radio, Money Business Reselling. Everybody well, like that. Subscribe. That's That'll all be up by the end of the month. Everything will be tagged on my Instagram. So follow it over there. And that's the best place to hit me. And let us know when you're going to have your – you said you're going to do a live webinar where we can do – Yeah, I'm going to have that probably in the next couple of days. I'm working on getting some stuff together for that. I'll send you guys the link to post. And it will be on YouTube, on the YouTube page. And – you guys can come in there and ask questions and stuff. On your YouTube, awesome, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, my YouTube page that has like no followers yet because I just started. Hey, we're gonna follow. That's gonna All change. Right, so speaking of, give Joey a thumbs up down below. Yeah. Follow me, and then when he posts, when he's gonna do that thirty-minute video, we're all gonna go watch, and then we'll all subscribe to Joey, 
and start building his uh, his viewer database. So thank you. And now let's all go over to Two Dogs Digs. Just go over to YouTube, look up Two Dogs Digs, and let's go watch their auctions then, and we'll have some fun. Thank so you. Gonna, I'm going to go shop now, so I'll be back later. All right. Well. To go to their Facebook page. We just look for their YouTube, Two Dogs Digs YouTube. Yes. Right there. Yep. Okay. Sell a lot tonight, Joey. Hustle. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye, everybody. You. Thanks for watching, everybody.